follow on from that and look at a different context. Okay, um, again, um, just to iterate what I said at the beginning of the session, I do have a stutter, so bear with me if I uh, have a few hiccups along the way. But uh, my talk today is entitled Rock Cut Tunes of the Central Mediterranean Green Visited. And uh, as you can see, I've got a bit of a trend towards uh, referencing articles that have been written in the past. And this is a bit of a nod to Roots 1972 article with this. But it's really trying to think about, um, again, in the spirit of EAA 25, what's really happened in the last 25 years when we think about Rock Cut Tunes. And uh, coming from my uh, background as a bioarchaeologist, as a bioarchaeologist, or trained as an osteologist, but very much one, um, but very much an osteologist that uh, pays quite a lot of attention to archaeological context. So thinking about uh, how people have th thought about rock cut tombs in terms of uh, typology, in terms of context, so their use, what's actually inside them, so all of the bones basically, and then uh, in terms of their chronology and. Um, I guess sort of um, the outline of the talk will just give a bit of a background about how uh, rock cut tombs have been discussed in the past before moving on to talk about chronology. So thinking about some of the general broader um, broader pictures and then moving on to a specific Maltese case study. So going back to what Rowan said about taking the personality test, uh, in this sense, or at least in this talk, I have a bit of a split personality because I'll be dealing with both of those. Um, and then trying to then uh, talk about future directions. Um, this paper also is sort of a bit of an initial exploration for me of what I'll be really getting into in the depth in my postdoc, or at least sort of a facet of what I'll be working on in the next year and trying to really explore. Um, so, really, in terms of what's going on, um, just a bit of background to get people up, up to speed is that we have. Um, Really, uh, the development and pr proliferation of rock cut tombs, particularly in the fourth and third millennia BC, alongside sort of various other monument forms, or I, I use the term monument very loosely, which covered sort of central southern Italian peninsula and the surrounding islands. And although quite a lot of papers have explored and discussed rock cut tombs, these are, these are some of the core papers which, over the years, I think have really focused solely on rock cut tombs and have really, I think, moved some of the discussions forward on that. And with regards to type typology, well, a lot, of, um, a lot of these discussions were initially rooted in diffusionism, so, so how rock cut tombs might have been introduced uh, from the eastern Mediterranean or surrounding ideas of architectural elaboration or cultural evolution. This is particularly uh, <coughs> uh, the case in Malta with some of John Evans's work. And then in terms of context and use of actually what's inside the tombs, um, this is some, something which has been, I, at least I think, has been less explored. Indeed, people have often thought of artifacts in terms of actual actual human, re, human remains and how that might help us to think about the development of rock cut tombs hasn't been explored as much. But some really important papers by uh, Andrea Dolfini and some of the work um, uh, of the rock, of rock cut tombs in Malta and excavations of sites like Selvajula in central Italy have really grappled with some of these ideas and I think uh, are a really useful framework for thinking about context and use. And then finally, chronology. And this is something, again, which hasn't been <coughs> a lot, but um, indeed because some of the papers which have talked about rock cut tombs were written at a time before there was a lot of dates, but some uh, ones which have tried to grapple with that was, again, Ruth's paper in 1972 was a uh, Definitely alluding to to um, to radiocarbon dating and refuting the diffusionist idea, and then Hayden's paper in two thousand and six, so introducing or really sort of championing this idea of uh, local development or simultaneous development. So we'll be talking a little bit about this, and um, really over the last twenty five years, uh, there's been a wealth of excavation where we have far better recording of these sites and many, many more new dates. And from our database that we've gathered together, we have 256 dates for rock cut tombs from across Malta, Sicily, Sardinia, and the Italian peninsula. 
Um, and that I think probably I think that counts for something about five or six percent of our total dates that we have for for the entire region in free history. So to move on to talk about some of these uh, more general trends again, I'm not going to necessarily I'm not going to necessarily oh I see actually our again I, uh, the the bottom diagram hasn't come out, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> but um. This is my fault. I wrote this software. Uh, <laughs> I know what's wrong. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, it's not that important. Um, <coughs> but yeah, so as I already mentioned, uh, Hayden's 2006 paper, which we developed this idea, or was not developed, but very much discussed this idea of simultaneous de de development of how rock cut tombs developed under these similar social and economic yeah. cultural circumstances is really, really interesting and therefore I'm not so interested in the initial development of rock tombs, but more so what happens throughout the millennia and particularly with their pro proliferation and gradual development. And here at this top, here this top model we, we can see all 256 dates modeled but then as we're on also uh, to get around sites which have been oversampled, so sites where we have a lot of dates which might sort of skew the results. We also have all regions with one date per per, <coughs> per unique site phase. So this actually allows us to get around this idea of certain sites being oversampled. And we can sort of see that we have this gradual proliferation in rock cut tombs, but then there's a very interesting dip sort of um, towards the end, towards the end of the fourth millennium and then it continued then proliferation. But what's really, really interesting, aside from that gradual pattern, this dip is actually something which we see in the radiocarbon record in, in all contexts. We just do generally see this this sort of dip at around about this time in the central Mediterranean. So that more sort of reflects overall activity patterns as perhaps sort of as opposed to being something specific to rock cut tombs. But I think then What's really interesting as well is breaking it down by region, but whenever we do that, of course, we then begin to maybe, um, we do begin to run into some problems and certain regions just don't have a, as much date as others, but it's still really worth it. Oh, and they haven't worked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so again, they're working on this, but they're not working on uh, this. So it's Are they on the, they're not on hot screen? They're not even on that. They're working on my laptop, but they're not working on it. I, I, I could. Okay. Um, I'll do that. I shall make it so. You guys can pause and before if you have any questions about the first part at all. <laughs> it's a transparency issue. Where is there's like a computer or right here, sorry. I don't want that. I'll have to work it off of PDF. I'm sure you can put it on soon. Do excuse these technical difficulties.
Yeah. Okay, super. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, um, so no. getting back. <laughs> so, um, yes. <laughs> oh no no no! Oh. Quite that. Just press this. <coughs> There we, there we go. Okay, sorry. So to get back on track, um, yeah. So again, this um, so again, this allows us to, to again uh, begin to ar ar arrive at some of the overall broad trends of the use of rock cut tombs sort of during the late Neolithic and Calvary. So very much during the fourth and third millennia, so we come into their use in the Bronze Age. So, so after the Calvary Age and onwards. It gets a bit more complicated, but um, but as well, breaking it down by region also is quite interesting. But we do fall into some issues in central Italy. We sort of have this signal the of the initial introduction. So thinking about these sites again, Andrea Dolfini's work with the Ponte San Pietro group or the Fontanacci groups and the work around Rome, where we have this sort of lots and lots of early coverage rock cut tombs. Um, and these very very dense sites, and again these very Nucleated centers of where we have lots of lots of rock cut tomb necropolis. <coughs> so actually, we kind of get a bit of a window into this sort of again to this idea that we do have these earlier rock cut tombs of these hypogea, not exactly rock cut tombs, but again sort of sometimes referred to. So places like Font, sites like Fonte Fever, where we have these again earlier Neolithic sites, we have this idea of this sort of uh, not quite continuity. It's very much broken continuity, but a longer staggered tra tra tradition which has been discussed. In Sicily, well, Sicily is always a bit pro pro problematic when we think about radiocarbon data, and we know that sort of this middle coverage area, we know that there certainly are sites in use at this time, but again, this is really very much a, a signal where that, you know, uh, there aren't a lot of dated sites at least published at the moment, but we do get this signal of the, of the proto -A, a Neolithic tombs places in the Agrigento ter territory, which we'll come to later in one of the other talks, but then also the use of rock cut tombs in Castelluccio early Bronze Age phase. In Sardinia, it's also really interesting where we get these three peaks of activity. Um, again, we also don't have a signal of sort of the initial development of a rock cut tombs. So we know that there are dates from sites like Cucuru <coughs> Ciario, which date to the sort of, uh, to about about 4,500 or so, which haven't been published, but we know that they're out there. But these three spikes are really, really interesting, I think are a bit of a signal of how these, whenever we get the development of these larger high, 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 high Bugia in the Otsiadia phase, in the late Neolithic, and then we get these cycles of reuse throughout the coverage, and again, these phases of reuse of these sites, which I think is probably driving this very interesting signal, which we see. So those are just some, some of the sort of broader general pictures, um, which I think are really worthwhile drawing out. Now I'm going to uh, move on to a to sort of a, to this specific and think of a, a Maltese case study. Again, I'm very sorry for this might look weird, but it's because it's on PDF and it was set up for animations. But trying to think about chronology and context and typology and the case study of Malta, which is very much my background whenever um, thinking about central Mediterranean or archaeology. <coughs> Well, quite a lot of the work thinking about rock cut tombs in Malta was very much based on this established system of, of architectural development of this sort of idea of Evans' idea of cultural evolution and uh, ritual ritual elaboration. We have these very simple single or double chambered rock cut tombs in the in the sort of uh, early part of the temple period in the Zabouge phase, and then as we come into the Gigantia period in the sort of middle late fourth millennium, we get the development of these lobed chambers and then by the end of the temple period in the Tarshine phase we then get these elaborate hypogea. It's also worth noting that there are a few sites in Malta, so many of so this model was based on you know a sample of one or two per per site type. But again this is very much the idea and something which was again informing some of the broader ideas of the central Mediterranean. But recent work over the last well, over the last 25 years but certainly over really the last 10 years has actually shown that the Shen the Shem Shear tombs, which again are part of this linchpin of this architectural development, uh, the dates which come from the Shem Shear tombs really span the entire length of the temple period, which has really began to throw this idea of architectural development into a bit of a tailspin. We also <coughs> have the excavation of 
of a Tarshin phase two, so again, coming from the end of the Maltese temple period, the third millennium, we have this uh, of a small double chambered tomb, which then shows us that we also have the use of smaller rock cut tombs alongside these larger hy hy hypogea, so places like Hal Safiani, which again are throwing this idea of this architectural development and this typological development into a bit of a tailspin. So that's really sort of how we can think about bringing together chronology and type, typology, trans transforming our idea of the development of rock cut tombs. Moving on to think a bit more about the context. Okay. And um, we can see that um, some people might be familiar with the site uh, with the rock cut tomb at the Shower Hypogeum, which the initial publication in 2009 dated it to the Zabouche phase, so at a, sort of at, a, at, a, at around about 4000 BC, and very much paralleled it to the Sicilian San Colo Piano Miltaro tombs in southern. Sicily. And what was very interesting about this site was that it had a very large communal burial assemblage. And this was something which was, again, parallel to the Sicilian sites where you only had about one individual in each small tomb. So the idea that this early rock, this early rock cup tomb had a very large communal burial assemblage was argued as being an early expression of Malta's ritual elaboration. We've now seen over um, the recent work, and you can sort of see this discussed in the recent paper, that actually this tomb has been redated to the Gigantea phase and instead of dating to the early 4th millennium and even into the 5th, <coughs> towards the late 4th millennium. And if we have that in mind, this larger communal burial assemblage is not as atypical as we thought. So again, we begin to see those larger kind of burial assemblages in other sites across the central Mediterranean. So again, this is really an, a, a sort of a a case study, an example of how we can combine chronology, context, and typology. I think it's really worth readdressing rock cut tombs across the entire central Mediterranean with this kind of combined approach. And whilst I would love to talk about the entire region, I, I, I couldn't possibly do it in a, I couldn't possibly do it in fifteen minutes, which is why I zeroed in on Malta. But these transformations are not unique to the Maltese case study, and indeed. In Central Italy and in Sardinia, you'll be beginning to see that actually these new excavations and new dates are really <coughs> beginning um, or can allow us to reevaluate rock cut tombs. And there really is, at least I think, a need to think about this combined approach, combined approach of thinking about um, the deposition processes within the tombs. Um, and then also just thinking about actually what are the, after the initial introduction of rock cut tombs, what are the sort of long term trends in their use? And then also uh, pointing out some of those areas such as Sicily and Sardinia where there just hasn't been as much research pressure and where we do really need more, more dates. There's been plenty of excavations, there's lots of material, but we need more dates. And with that, I'll end my time. I'd just like to say thanks to Fink for funding and thank you. Thank you.